Hi, welcome to Paint Talk, the show where I give my thoughts on oil painting. Today we're going to be talking about bad habits. I'm going to give you some of the uh, most common examples of bad habits that I see and that I have seen in myself. So let's just get to it. Uh, these aren't in any particular order. All right, the first one's going to be tracing. I see this a lot on YouTube. If you're watching a time-lapse painting video of somebody's painting and they didn't show themselves drawn it, chances are they traced it. Now, is tracing 100% horrible and bad? No, there's a time and a place to do it if you're in a rush. Um, I just highly recommend not doing that if you're a beginner because you could you as you get better at painting you could also be getting better at your drawing skills and drawing is extremely extremely important for oil painting and it's so easy to just trace something and you say you'll do it just this one time i've been guilty of this too of, of tracing or using a grid when i need to get something done quick or a commission or something like that and you say oh, i'm just going to do it this one time like i know how to draw blah 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 and you do it and then you do it again and then you do it again, then you do it again, and before you know it, it's been months before you've actually drawn something and you haven't gotten any better. And you can talk to the most advanced, accomplished artist, painter, whoever you think is the absolute best, and they will tell you they could still get better at drawing. You always can get better at drawing. It is just so important that you don't want to miss any opportunity you have to get better at it. And I think it's not the best thing in the world that so many people on YouTube are one skipping that step. I mean, I think I even have some videos out there where I didn't show myself drawing it and they should, that is part of it. And a lot of these people that are tracing it or, you know, they'll project it, you know, onto their canvas and, and then trace it. Because anytime you see the drawing and it's just done perfectly with no stray marks, and it's, it's just one line, it just almost looks outlined, they traced it. Um, so just be aware of that. That's not bad that they do that. Like I'm not trying to put them down or anything like that, but just be aware of it when you see it and don't discount the value of drawing. It is extremely valuable. So whenever you can, work on your drawing skills. All right, number two is people, most people when they start out, stand or sit way too close to their canvas um, and this is just a physical thing that if you change it will help you a lot always be standing further away from your canvas i actually paint people point it out to me and they think it looks weird but it's really just the best way i think to do it is i actually hold the brush let me grab a brush i hold my brush at the very end that way i can get that much further and i hold it out you know completely stretched out and get as far, far away as I can while I'm painting. You may be like, oh, I can't control the brush, blah, blah, blah. You will get better at the control of it. And also you don't, for most of the painting until the end, you don't need to be right up there doing this. Like that's literally the last 5% of the painting that you need to do this. You need to focus on the big picture, how everything's working together and being stepped back. I've seen artists that even will put when they set up their studio a piece of tape five seven feet away however you know it is they want to know where to step back and i myself have even set like a constant alarm on my phone every five to ten minutes to let myself know you know stop painting step back look at it it's amazing how much the painting changes from standing in front of it like you know a couple feet to seven feet you see so much more and it's such a bad habit to get into just constantly you know because a lot of people sit down that's why I try and stand up as much as I can when I'm painting so it's so easy for me to step back if you do have a chair get a wheelie chair that you can wheel back um, if you have you know if you have to sit down uh, to paint just be very aware of that and you know don't get comfortable right up against your canvas because it's only going to hurt you next bad habit i've heard of a lot of instructors say this i've had instructors say this to me is most painters don't put out enough paint on their palette i know oil paint isn't the cheapest thing in the world but you need to be willing to put out a lot of paint 
it's this isn't watercolors this isn't acrylics we're gonna be layering a bunch of thin layers you really want to get some paint out and really be mixing up good amounts of paint one so you don't have to like keep remixing a color although that's not the worst thing in the world that happens don't worry if you mix a color and you run out I'm not gonna be able to remix it exactly you will it'll be fine but just be like getting used to having a lot of paint on your brush like you know oil painting brushes are thick and can hold you know they're designed to hold thick chunky paint without the bristles or the bristles bending and not being able to apply it onto the canvas you know canvas is you know tooth and has a texture to it so the paint can attach onto it like you really want to get used to and like the feeling of a lot of paint on your brush and I know this can be complicated because a lot of people will do this and they put out their first layer of paint and it's really thick and now you know it's dark they're trying to work dark to light and they put out some dark uh, paint on their canvas and now they can't put a light paint over it because it's just this thick dark paint is just overpowering any light color they put over top of it yeah you have to be you know aware of that you don't want to go too thick too soon but just because there's a lot of paint on your palette and your pools of paint and your colors doesn't mean you have to apply all of that to your canvas. You will, you know, eventually in the later stages of the painting when it's necessary to use thick paint. It's a hard thing to explain. You just kind of have to do it. And trust me, you'll see in time the benefits of putting out a lot of paint, mixing up enough paint when you are mixing colors. It will make a difference. All right, next bad habit, using black. Now, I'm not against using black like I'm I personally don't use it um I don't recommend beginners use it because it doesn't it's such it's easy to make it be a crutch and anytime you have something dark you're just gonna go straight to black to darken it um and you can get carried away with that and I think it's better to understand what's going on in those very darks of your subject matter of kind of knowing like oh it's a really really dark blue how do I mix like a really dark blue that almost appears black or a really dark green that almost appears black it, it just gives you a better understanding of color there's a lot of artists that use black there's the Zorns palette that has black you know that's an exception I'm not really talking about that and I'm, I'm really just speaking for uh, people starting out and getting a handle on color it's just black is just too tempting I feel of a color to have on your palette because you're just going to immediately go there when you need a dark and you're never going to really learn how to get to those darks if you don't have black. All right, another thing that I did for a very, very long time and I see people do it is they neglect the background as they're painting. And don't think, whenever you're painting something, whether it's a still life, landscape, portrait, never think of the thing, your subject you're painting as the thing, as the painting, and then everything else is secondary. It's all one. It's all... Painting a, if you're painting a portrait of me, what's happening back here, even if it was just straight color, it's, it, it's, it's all a part of it. The light, you know, I'm getting light that's reflected off objects around me and it's going to show up in my face. And so if you just like painted the face and then painted the background at, uh, you know, after it, it can come out right and there's artists that do it, but it's going it, to, I feel like it's going to be more difficult because you're not going to be working it all as, as one. And there's benefits to doing the background as you go it's just another tool that you can use to make the subject better because you can see the colors you're laying down how they're going to look on the finished product you know when you lay down a color and you got your background already kind of like working you can kind of see what the end product's going to be if you have nothing on your background and you're laying all these colors you have no idea how those colors are going to work with the background that you choose later on in the painting you know, so you're kind of just taking a risk that, oh, I hope whatever color I choose in my background works with the, you know, what I'm painting here. And, you know, like I said, like light reflects. And you'll see a lot of times, especially in portraiture, the color of the background is reflected in certain areas um, of the face. You know, it also can be used to, you know, help with the drawing aspect of being able to cut back into a subject using the background to help, you know, reshape it if the drawing wasn't correctly. It's... It's just a really good habit to get into of, of putting in the background as you go. I'm not saying you need to do the background first. You can. Some people do that. But, you know, I always get my background in. Even if it's not the exact color or value that's going to be at the end, I get something back there so I'm not just working against nothing. All right, now this is, this is a big one. 
this one is very common, is a lot of people use way smaller of a brush than they should. Uh, because the saying is, I forget which painter said, it might have been Sargent said, use a bigger brush than you think you need. And using a big, I know it's going to seem, it seems dumb and it's going to be extremely uncomfortable for you to do. You're going to be like, why am I doing this? I, you know, I'm uncomfortable doing this. And but what using a big brush means is, especially when you're starting out with a painting, you want to just focus on the broad shapes, you know, the big picture, you know, the big values, big shapes, and using a big brush forces you to do that. Because sometimes you have to physically force yourself to not go into detail too soon. Because I don't care how well you do that detail, if it's not done on a good foundation of drawing and values and seeing the big shapes, it's not gonna matter. Now this actually goes right into another bad habit, closely related, which is detail. I feel like people put way too much value in detail. They care way too much about being in detail. I see a lot of paintings that are very detailed, but their values are off, their colors are off, their drawings off, so it doesn't really matter. And, you know, detail isn't everything. You know, detail gets a lot of praise, especially like online and stuff like that. You know, hyper realism, all that, everything. But if you're like starting out, like don't worry about nailing the detail. That's not what's gonna make your painting. What's gonna make or break your painting is you nailing the drawing and nailing the values. You don't even almost need detail. I've seen so many paintings that are absolutely incredible that have very little detail because they nailed the drawing and the values and the colors. And when you, especially when you jump into detail too early and you start getting detailed, when you step back and you realize what you've done wrong, you, it's so hard for you mentally to get rid of what you messed up and change it because you spent so much time on these little details before you actually blocked it in correctly, laid down the values, figured out how everything is going to be working together. And it's going to be really hard for you to just paint over it and, and, and start over because you went into detail too quickly. That's the great thing about blocking something in is, you know, if I'm just like blocking it in, just getting like the major shapes, like say of a landscape and the landscape has, you know, probably like 10 or less shapes going on in there. If one of them's not working, it's no big deal to change. It's like, all right, well, I got like 10 shapes, you know, eight shapes going on right now, kind of values. I, it's not a big deal to change one of them if it's not correct in any kind of way. But when I've gone in there and like worked the detail of this one tree, now it's time to work on another section of the painting. And I realize the value of that tree doesn't match the value of like the field that it's on. It's like, oh no, I got to change that whole tree and I need to repaint that whole tree. And I spent five hours painting all this detail on it. Uh-oh. And you're really going to not want to do that. And so you're going to lie to yourself and say that it's okay. You don't want to do that. So, you know, don't worry about the detail until everything else is figured out. And I think you will real, I think as you progress and get better, you will care less and less about detail and you detail will become more of a choice when you want to put it in and when you don't, because when you, get really good at the other things you don't need detail unless you want to do it also with using too small of a brush same can be said about having too many brushes uh, having too many too much materials in general people feel they need you know all these materials to do well and you don't especially when you when you're starting out the less the better I think because the less choices you have, I feel like in any creative thing you do, especially when you're starting out, the better. You don't, because you have a lot of creative choices, like where do I start? You know, you're gonna be questioning yourself, should I have used this brush, should I have used that one? What about this brush? I bought it and I have, I've gone the whole painting without even using it, am I supposed to be used? Keep it simple. I think you'll, you know, in brushes, it's what you're comfortable using. Everybody uses different brushes for different things. You know, yes, you can watch painters that you like, and you see something working for them, you can try it out. Maybe it'll work for you too. Um, I'm always kind of trying out different brushes, different stuff. But 
like I know that when I paint, you know, if I go out and paint a landscape, I'm probably only going to be, you know, it's common only use five brushes, less, two brushes. I forgot my brushes one time and I bought a brush from somebody. I literally painted a whole painting with one brush. It, you know, don't put so much stock into the, your materials and thinking just because you see other painters with hundreds of brushes that you need to have that many brushes to do it well. You don't keep it simple. Get a few brushes, get ones you like and stick with those. Uh, I talked about too many brushes, too many colors. This is big. You don't need 10 colors on your palette. If, you, if that helps you, go for it. You don't need to. And like I said, if you're starting out, keeping things simple, it's just gonna be better. It's also gonna save you money. I've always said for beginners, you only need four, maybe five colors, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, uh, cad lemon, titanium white, if you want burnt umber, because if you make a burnt umber and the ultramarine blue, you get a very, very dark, almost black color pretty quickly. Um, also burnt umber is good for kind of sketching in or if you wanna do an underpainting, anything like that. But I see these people when they start out and they, they get, they oh, I need all these colors because they think the more colors that you buy, the more color options you have, which isn't really true. Um, you can mix any color from those three colors in white. Uh, and what you're kind of doing is adding more factors into the equation. You know, there's, you know, if I, there's a certain color that I want to get to, there's a million ways to get to that color. And if I have 25 different colors, it's gonna be kind of daunting to know where to start and what color to add to where. If I only have three or four colors, I know well, it's one of these three or four, let's start with one of them and start working. And it also just simplifies in your mind when you're mixing colors, you're just thinking, does it need more red? Does it need more blue or does it need more yellow? Where am I going? And just keeping it simple like that is just, I think it just is so important for people starting out. Um, but I mean, hey, if people are different if you like having a lot of different colors if that's kind of how you learn colors while painting go for it um this is the way i did it uh the way i think is helpful for people starting out um so just keep it simple if you can save some money don't need a lot of colors all right that's it for today uh if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel you can also follow me on instagram see what i'm painting on a daily basis at forza 43 if you have other questions about oil painting um maybe there's something on uh this video that i didn't go enough detail about uh, let me know in the comments section if there's something that you want to know about or you just have a basic question about oil painting let me know i will answer it i'm chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting